my name is Erin. I'm the Makerspace and Digital Literacy Librarian at Brampton Library. Today's virtual program is being offered as part of Culture Days, so be sure to check out the many other sessions that are part of the Brampton Library Culture Days Hub this year. Today we're going to explore how, some ways that we can customize or personalize a Brampton Library book bag, just like this one. You can pick one up for free at our any of our Brampton Library locations while supplies last, or feel free to use any other reusable bag that you may already have at home. Before we begin today's session, I would like to acknowledge that we are gathering here today on the treaty territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, and before them, the traditional territory of the Haudenosaunee, Huron, and Wendat. We also acknowledge the many First Nations, Métis, Inuit, and other global Indigenous people that now call Brampton their home. We are honored to live, work, and enjoy this land. Now today we are going to be working primarily with our vinyl cutter. Uh, we have the Silhouette Cameo available at our Chinkuzi, Springdale, and Four Corners Makerspaces. Unfortunately, our makerspaces are closed to the public currently due to COVID-19 restrictions. However, we welcome you to take advantage of our remote makerspace on-demand service. And I'll chat more about how you can access that service a little bit later on in today's program. The Silhouette Cameo, and I've got one here with me, is a electronic cutting machine designed for personal use. Like a home printer, it plugs into your computer with a simple USB cord. However, instead of printing, it uses a small blade to cut out paper, cardstock, vinyl, fabric, and a number of other materials. Today, we're gonna to explore how we can use this machine to create a fabric stencer, stencil, or a custom iron-on design, which we'll use to personalize our Brampton Library tote bag. Now, the first thing you're going to need to do is create your design. And I'll show you some of the design tools in the Silhouette software uh, momentarily, but you're also welcome to use any other design application that you may have access to, and then export it and import it into the Silhouette Studio software. Keep in mind that simple lines and vector designs are going to work best. Um, you may consider using a program like Adobe Illustrator or Inkscape, which is a free vector design tool. Uh, Canva, the free version of Canva is also a great option. Uh, and there are a number of cut file repositories uh, that have um, files that are free for personal use that you could also take a look at. Freecutfiles.com, LoveSVG, and Happy Crafters are some of my favorite. And of course, you can go old school and draw your design on paper and then scan it into the computer. So I'm going to switch over to my Silhouette software now. Let's take a look at what that looks like. So for my first example, I am going to set up my design in Silhouette Studio. And this is the software that we use to prepare files for cutting. And it's a free application that can be downloaded from the Silhouette America website. So if you'd like to pause the video right now to go ahead and download the software on your own computer so that you can follow along, you're welcome to do so. Now you can create your design right here in the Silhouette Studio software. There are a number of design tools available for you. Um, we've got point editors, line tools, shapes, uh, pencil drawing tools, text, and other uh, design creation options. Now, your other option, like I mentioned, is to use a different design program that you may have access to, export your design as a graphic, and then import that here into Silhouette Studio. And we'll also take a look at that. But to start, um, I've decided to go with a pretty simple text-based design. So I'm gonna go ahead and create it right here in Silhouette Studio. Now, earlier today, I measured out the general size um, that I want my design to be. And I determined to, that I'm going to cut it about six by five inches. So to start off, I'm going to create a bounding box using the box uh, tool. And I'm gonna make sure that that is about six by five inches and I can change the, the dimensions up here in the properties panel. 
So this is going to make sure that my design will fit in my desired space on my tote bag. Next, I'll create a text box. So I've hit, I've selected the text tool. I'm going to click my cursor and I'm going to enter my phrase, which is going to be on my way to the library, seeing as it's a library book bag. Now, I'm not too thrilled with this Arial Unicode default font, so I'm actually going to select all my text here. Oops. And I'm going to choose a different font that I like, but I'm going to go with this Greek Franklin Gothic Heavy, which is a little more weight to it. Now, using the text properties tool uh, menu over here, textile panel, I can actually change uh, or adjust uh, the character spacing and the line spacing. So for me, I'd like this to be a little, each the lines to be a little closer together. So I'm just going to adjust that. And I think I'm okay with the character spacing on this one. And I'm actually going to uh, scale this up a little bit so it fits my bounding box a little better so I can make that adjustment. And I think that looks good. I'm happy with that. Now, notice that the outlines are already or automatically there for me. Um, anything you create in the Silhouette Studio software is going to automatically provide those cut lines for you. But let's take a look at another example where I'm actually going to have to extract the cut lines. So in this tab over here, I have a graphic that I created in Canva, actually. Um, my laptop doesn't have very many fonts to work from, nothing too exciting or special. So I actually went into Canva and used one of the fonts available there, just in the free version, and came up with this design, which has more of a texturized font that I like a lot better. So I've saved this as a PNG file, and I've opened it in Silhouette Studio. But I'm not going to be able to cut this as is, because we don't actually have any cut lines yet. What I'm going to need to do is trace my image. So I've opened up the trace panel, I'm going to select select trace area, and I'm going to click and drag a box over top of my design and release the mouse. Now you can see that it's applied a yellow mask on top of my design. Let's just zoom in a little bit more. And what I'm looking for is a nice solid trace. This looks pretty good. Um, if your trace is a little bit patchy, you can always adjust the threshold and the path filters or the scale um, in these setting boxes here. This looks pretty good for me. I'm pretty happy with this trace. So I'm gonna go ahead and select trace style for trace. And now you can see that there are red cut lines outlining my design. At this point, I can actually take my graphic and remove it off of my um, cutting area. I'm just going to reposition this a little more optimally on the cutting mat. I didn't mention this, but when we're looking at Silhouette Studio, it does give us a preview of what our material and our cutting mat is going to look like. So this helps us to position um, our cut on the material properly. Okay, so once you're happy with your design, uh, and your cut lines have been extracted and are ready to go, it's time to head over to the send panel. Uh, but wait, there's actually one other step we need to consider. And this has to do with the type of material that we're going to be working with. In this example, I'd like to make this an iron on transfer. So I'm gonna be working with heat transfer vinyl. With heat transfer vinyl, you always wanna cut the design on the back of the material. Um, and not the plastic carrier sheets. Um, when you cut vinyl in the adhesive side, that clear plastic sheet is gonna hold your design in place until you apply it onto your surface. So because of that, we need to make sure that we flip or mirror our design so that when we flip the adhesive side down, it is uh, the right side up. So I'm going to do that by clicking on my design, right clicking and then flipping it horizontally so that it's mirrored. If you're like me and you tend to forget this, don't fret. Um, the Silhouette Studio is very smart and it will actually ask you if you want to mirror, if you haven't already, um, when it becomes time to send the job. 
Okay, so now I think we're ready to cut. So I'm gonna head over to the send panel. The send panel is where we make sure we have the correct settings for our machine and our blade. Now, the first thing I need to do is select my material. Uh, and as I mentioned, we're going to be working with heat transfer. So I'm gonna look for that in the option list here. And I see there's lots of different types of heat transfer, but the one that I would like to select is going to be smooth heat transfer. Now, as we can see, there are a few different options to choose from. Sorry, as we can see, there's a few different settings um, that have been adjusted based on the material that we selected. So Heat Transfer Smooth recommends a blade depth of one, force of four, and a speed of eight. Now, generally speaking, these settings should work perfectly well for any type of smooth heat transfer, but manufacturers can vary. And sometimes, you know, a CSER might be different from a Silhouette brand. So we wanna make sure when you're using a material for the first time that you do a heat cut he got a test cut so that you can uh, make minor adjustments to these settings as needed. So sometimes you might need the blade to be slightly deeper or a little more force applied. And something I've learned from practice is when you're cutting anything with a lot of small intricate um, cuttings, it's a good idea just to slow down the blade a bit. So I'm going to slow this down to speed. So the slow this down to six um, for a better cutting result. Okay, so now before I actually um, send the job, we need to prepare the material. So I'm just going to pause here for one moment and I'll be right back to show you how we do that. Okay, so what I've done is I've cut out a piece of heat transfer vinyl and applied it to the sticky mat. This is a carrier mat that's going to hold our material in place as it moves through the machine. Now, remember, we're working with heat transfer vinyl here. So it's very important that we apply it with the adhesive side up. Um, it's a little hard to see with this white color material, um, but if you flip it around, you can see that this side is much more shiny. This is actually the carrier sheet that's gonna hold our vinyl together. So once my material is firmly applied on the mat, I'm actually gonna go ahead and feed it into my machine like so. So there's a few indicator, there's a couple of indicator lines on the machine that help me line it up properly. And I can use these keys here to, or buttons to adjust it. So sometimes um, there's a piece of vinyl that you want to avoid. So you may want to feed it in a little bit more um, than the initial load in space. Okay, so once I've done that, let's go back to my screen. Uh, once my material is loaded, it's time for us to send the job. Um, so I've checked all my settings and I think I'm good to go. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to send my job. And they know that my machine's ready down here. It has the green ready sign and I'm going to hit send. Um, I'm going to save you the uh, annoyance of the loud cutting. It is machine is known to be quite noisy, um, but I'll, I'll come back as soon as the job is finished finish cutting and it's going to take about uh, four to five minutes for this particular one as there's a lot of little tiny pieces that it needs to cut out. So I'll meet you back here in just a second. Okay, so my cut has completed. So I'm going to remove it from the machine. Uh, and my next step is I'm actually going to have to weed out all of the excess vinyl. Now this can be one of the most tedious parts about working with a vinyl cutter is we actually have to go ahead and remove all of the excess vinyl. And I usually do that using a pick tool or some tweezers um, to help me remove. 
um, everything that we don't want to be part of our design. Now, I'm not going to make you uh, sit here and watch me do that. So we did actually cut this earlier today. And here's an example of one in progress um, that I started. And you can see here that I've had to use my pick tool to remove um, all of the negative space from my design. Okay, so I'm going to work on finishing this and I'll be back in a second with the fully weighted design and it'll be time to apply it to our tote bag. Okay, so that took a little bit of time, but I have completed weeding out all of the excess vinyl for my design. So now I am ready to apply it to my tote bag. So I'm going to switch cameras here and we'll take an overhead shot. Okay. So I'm going to position this uh, where I'd like it to appear on my tote bag. So put it just about right here. So as you can see, we're making sure the adhesive side is in contact with the fabric. Now, as the name suggests, we apply heat transfer vinyl with heat. So um, you can use your regular household iron, uh, but you'll want to make sure that um, your iron is dry and hot. Um, not too hot, maybe the, a low to mid high, a low to mid temperature setting, um, but it's really important that it's dry and that you have a firm flat surface to apply it on. I'm going to be using um, this little mini craft iron um, as, instead of a household iron, but you, your regular household iron will work just as well. Okay, so I've positioned my vinyl on my bag. And the next thing I want to do is start applying heat. Now I'm going to put this little cushion underneath to protect my table. If you don't have a pressing pad or pillow like this, you can certainly just use some towels or some dishcloths uh, folded up and layered. And then I'm also going to apply this protective sheet on top. Um, this is one specifically for applying heat transfer vinyl. Um, if you don't have anything like this, like at home, um, you can easily just put uh, a couple of tea, a tea towel over top or some parchment paper it would work as well. So I'm going to apply medium heat uh, for about five to six seconds in each area while pressing firmly. And the reason why we want to apply this protective sheet is so that we don't accidentally melt our uh, bag material because it is a polymer, it's a plastic -y type material that of course could melt if too much heat is applied. I'm just keeping my iron moving back and forth. You don't want to put too much um, heat in any one particular area. And I'm going to take a look and see if it's adhering as I would like it to. So let's take a look. So yep, as we can see, it's adhered nicely to my tote bag. I'm just going to give it another once over with some firm, even pressure, just to make sure it's nicely adhered. Okay. And there we go. You can see a little better. And as you can see, um, it is nicely adhered to our fabric. We can actually sort of see a little bit of that weave pattern uh, peeking through uh, the vinyl, which is a good sign that it's adhered properly to our surface. Now, this is just one way that we can use the vinyl cutter. 
to customize our tote bag. But you'll see um, at the bottom of this one, I have this little paint stencil with the word bookworm. And this is something I also created with the vinyl cutter. But instead of using heat transfer vinyl, I actually used regular adhesive vinyl and created a fabric stencil. So, here's what I used initially, and we'll go ahead and show you how I did that. So, here's the vinyl that I cut out. So, I'm actually just going to peel it off and use the reverse to uh, create my stencil. And I'm going to apply it nice and firmly on my fabric. You want to make sure I'm going to twist this around so we can see a little bit better. I want to make sure to press down all the little edges, especially in these little bits and pieces. Our hashtag here didn't quite make it up. Let's see if we can fix that. Might have had some cutting problems. That's okay. We'll leave it as a design feature. So I've made sure that all of my edges are nice and firmly pressed down. And I'm going to go and take my inner circles in my O's and my B's so we can make sure we create that letter properly. That's probably the trickiest part of this technique. Okay, got our O. And we're going to put on our B. Okay. No, I'm just using the regular craft paint um, that you can purchase at the dollar store or any craft store. Very inexpensive, simple acrylic paint. And I'm using a stiff stencil brush, but you could also use one of those inexpensive foam brushes. Again, also available at any craft store or uh, dollar store. For this, you want to make sure you're not using too much paint and you want to go lightly. Um, if you put too much paint on at once, it could seep through the stencil. So it's a good, a good technique is to go lightly and then fill in as needed. So I'm just making sure that vinyl is nice and hot and we can go in and stencil in our design, just like this. Now I'm going very quickly for the purposes of today's video. I would normally be a little more careful about it, but let's see what results we can get. So just stippling on just like this, make sure you get enough paint on the black area where the fabric is showing through. If you wanted to get fancy, you could try blending different colors on different layers. The possibilities are really endless. You can be as creative as you want to be. So that's just a really quick um, example. Um, once your paint is applied, all you need to do is pull off your vinyl and reveal your design. And of course, you're going to want to let that dry. We'll pop off these little middle pieces too.
All right. And there you have it. That's two really simple ways that you can customize uh, your library book bag using tools available in our library maker spaces. So with that said, I wanted to let you know about our Makerspace On Demand service. So as I mentioned at the top, our Makerspaces are currently closed to the public due to COVID-19, although all of our branches have reopened under regular hours. Um, while you can't come into our Makerspaces to access the equipment, we do invite you to use our remote Makerspace On Demand service. This includes vinyl cutting as well as 3D printing. Um, there's a form on our website where you can upload your project details and let us know what it is you are hoping to accomplish. We'll then contact you to arrange a virtual consultation where we'll examine your project together and we'll help you set it up in the appropriate software such as Silhouette Studio, which we looked at earlier today. And for a limited time, we will have heat transfer vinyl available. This is something that's not normally available in our makerspace, but for culture days, we have made a small quantity available for those who have attended today's workshop. So if you're interested in making a heat transfer uh, design uh, like we demonstrated, um, you can note this in the notes section of your request, mention that you attended this workshop and that you'd like to do an HTV project. And we will be happy to uh, provide um, a small amount of heat transfer vinyl for a limited time and while supplies last. Okay, I'd also encourage you uh, to try one of our e-resources called Creative Bug. If you enjoy this type of activity and this type of project, there's tons of other projects that you can follow along with uh, through this e-resource. In fact, there's a whole section on cutting machine crafts with lots of other fun projects that you can do with the guidance of uh, crafting and cutting machine experts uh, and influencers as well. Some you may notice from YouTube or other um, crafting websites. So I'm going to hang up my newly bedazzled Brampton Library tote bag up here on my wall with my other examples. I hope this project has inspired you to, I hope this project has inspired you to get creative with your library book bag, think of a unique design and personalize it to make it your very own. With that said, um, if you enjoy working on uh, projects of any time, we also have a program called Virtual Maker Meetup. This is an open-ended session where anyone who's working on projects of any kind is welcome to come and share and show us what you're working on in any stage of completion, even if it's just a kernel of a thought inside your head. Um, we're a group that likes to encourage each other uh, to make progress in our projects, uh, to share ideas, to connect, and to create. So these happen the last Tuesday of every month, uh, and our next meetup will be happening Tuesday, September 27th at 7 p.m. And you can find more details about how to join on our website at bramptonlibrary.ca. For more information about our makerspaces and other programs, please visit our calendar of events or the make section on our website, again, at bramptonlibrary.ca. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you've learned something new and been inspired to create something. We look forward to seeing you at the library. Thanks so much, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye.